Wow. Hold on one second. Yeah. Hey, babe, I'm in the middle of a podcast. Talk to you later, babe. <laughs> Just like in classic Caucasian girlfriend fashion, you oh. know, she's sweet. Is what I'm saying. Oh, what is? Yeah, it? she's awesome. Congrats. She's new too, right? She's a newbie. Yeah, nice. she's a newbie. She's cool though. She's really dope. She's like, um, girl, I met like randomly through another friend, uh -huh. and it was like, let's get tacos and hang out, and then that's it's been that wow. ever since. Pretty wild. That's amazing. Congratulations. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Finally blowing up. Yeah. Now I got a girl? The fuck? <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> you know, I th I had listened to a couple other episodes of No I Knows Nothing with you mm -hmm. guys, and I think it was like ep the third episode that you were in that yeah. you got the girlfriend. And then there was a little drama. Yeah. But you fixed it. You fixed it. Yeah, I got her a puppy. That was it. Oh, man. I was doing a girl's heart. Or a kitten. Yeah. This was, sorry for saying the wrong name during sex. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pay for pussy with pussy I guess. Uh, that's that's the currency she knows but dude i'm super excited to have you we are recording do you want to like warm up to it hey let's go kick Fuck off it. this intro all right <clears throat> are you ready all right hello everybody welcome to another episode of a comedy advice podcast it's me Stefan satani your regular host and joining me is a very special guest everybody please welcome phoenix comedian from sleepy hollow eric <laughs> Verno. That's me. That's me. That's me. But anyway, you look real good. You've got the nice shoe. Well, kind of well, nice yeah, shoes. Well, yeah, my puppy chewed up my shoes, so we'll oh, just man. show the camera this real fast. <laughs> so these were cool at one point, and uh, now they're my slippers. So it oh, all works out. They're excellent. I haven't. My feet do not know what shoes feel like. I've had sandals, little flippy floppies, mm -hmm. and my wife got me some sweet UGG slippers. So I've How been those rocking feel? those. You know, I feel great. Um. Yeah, they're pretty is it, awesome. Is it that you buy a, you buy Uggs, they give away a pair or something like that? They do. Yes. Yeah. They sold like a billion. Yeah. There should yeah. be no one without shoes then. It, pretty much. Pretty but, much. See, that's why I need to know where these shoes are going. But I think that well, they give a pair, but then they give it directly to a underprivileged white girl. So it's oh, basically so they a rack basic up bitch. on. Oh, okay, it makes sense now. Yeah. It all makes sense. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Underprivileged white girl. Yeah. Which is just I'm overprivileged not... everything else. Exa exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, they should give it to yeah, overprivileged yeah. white girls. That yeah. balances out. That would be better. Yeah. So they could throw it at underprivileged every anybody else. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Exactly. That's the right way to do it. And a free Starbucks. Yeah, that's where we go. It's I'm liking no. that we're starting this podcast out like this. This is pretty good. No PC, man. This, nope, nope. Come it's on, a venti man. cup of, yeah. of whatever we want to say. Yeah, I already date a Starbucks cup. You know what I mean? My girl's white. I call her my pale princess <laughs> and uh, her little translucent ass. No, I like, I mean, it's it's fun. To, and she makes fun of me too. Yeah. She makes yeah. fun of me too. She's like, you don't use the dishwasher? I never use the dishwasher. You don't use the dishwasher. Wild, right? It shows you like two uh, a tale of two cities, right? It's like two different people coming from two different worlds. And I was like, no, my mom told me that that's for lazy people. But I just realized we just never had one. Oh, so my shit. mom was just like, yo, those are for lazy people. AKA we're poor, <laughs> we're poor. And that's why we, and I literally bought a home. Right. Yeah. And I have one and she goes, this looks like it's never been used. I'm like, Oh yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know if it even works. And she goes like, are you nuts? I'm like, yeah. Oh, damn. these little things. Right. It's like, uh, <laughs> even like, like she's like, uh, babe, there's no more hand soap. I'm like, hold on. Let me see. I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> Fill it up <laughs> with water. water. Yep. You're good to go, babe. And she's like this. Yeah. This is all going to stop. Oh, my so I God. I was like, okay. Dude, I used to do the same exact things. Mm -hmm. My wife and I, we lived in Jersey, yeah. in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Shout out to Elizabeth, New Jersey. I know the place very well. Dude, love Elizabeth, but no dishwasher. So we were washing dishes for the By good. hand, yeah. yeah. Like we're, you know, like new immigrants to the city. That's yes. the way I looked at it. It was, it was cool. We all did it. No, yeah. but I used to tell her, and she, she was like, yeah. She looked at me like I was nuts about it. Like, <laughs> But like I said, Tale of Two Cities, we do that. She's like, you know, she, she's like, yeah. she has a whole- Is she, she from Phoenix? Yeah. Okay, okay. Because like, I feel like Phoenix. She'll like have a robe, a hair thing. So, like she has um, house pants, a house shirt. Oh. And she'll, yeah, just to, she's like, Where, why don't you just put on your house pants? I'm like, what are you talking about? Like my boxers or like just some shorts? Like she's like, you should have pants that you slip onto as soon as you get off of work. Are you done? And I was like, huh. This whole time I've just been like in my undies. <laughs> yeah, but I get it. I have tried it and she bought me these like. Yeah. Pants. 
<laughs> to these home fans. <laughs> and uh, I'm getting gentrified pretty much. I'm getting gentrified in my own home. Dude, next to the Uggs. Which serves me right because I live in Gilbert. Like, I live in Gilbert, so yeah. it's gonna, people already think I'm like the maintenance guy over there. So <laughs> oh it's just God. like, whatever it is, that's fine. But no, man, she's awesome. It, it's cool. It's cool yeah. to have somebody who's cool. That's, that makes sense. That's very fair. You know, yeah. it's it's really funny because I am the white guy in the relationship. Yeah, and, and then my wife at, is Brazilian. That's right. Yeah. It's about yeah. to jiu-jitsu your ass. Dude, she, yes. Or twerk on it. Or uh, yeah, yeah. what is it like? Or, Serra uh, Dura. Where or is she capoeira right in your face. Oh, it's, dude, she capoeira. has capoeira right Yeah, you know what's so face. crazy? My, my nephew's half Brazilian. So, mm. yeah. So, his father's from Sao Paulo. Okay. And uh, we went to the beach with him. He was like, my, I guess my sister met him when he was like fresh out of Brazil. And a yeah. long time ago. My nephew's in his 20s now. Yeah. And he was just looking at the beach like, one, he goes, why are there so many fat people? <laughs> Literally. Whoa. That's what he said. I mean, he's new to the country. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, and why does everyone cover so much? Dude, my wife thought the exact same thing. Like, I remember the first time we went to the pool. She's like, why are you wearing shorts? Where's your thong? Dude, exactly. Ask you where your thong was at. Yeah, exactly. Where's your exactly. banana hammock? She, I had to wear a Speedo to go to Brazil. Did you wear one? Oh, yeah. Oh, I would wear one. Oh, I yeah. I would totally wear one. Oh, dude. I like the little American flag. It's a tush. little, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're repping? Yeah. No, it's a, it's gotta be, I don't give a fuck who you think you are. It's gotta be kind of fun. Dude, it's to just not like, bad. Just chill. Yeah. It's like, it's like being a superhero outside. Yes. Think about it. It's just like I'm in my undies. I'm chilling. I'm Quail Man or whatever reference you need to use. <laughs> like, shout out to Doug. And <laughs> no, man, it's 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 got to be fun. I've never done it. I've, I've I've joked. I've put it on. Right. Whatever. But I never went out with it. I always said I would. And then like my friends like, come on, dude. We're in Miami. Like, we're chilling. I'm like, all right, cool. No one gives it. But it's it's no liberating. I have so it's to cool. Say. So it's... you guys are yeah. No, that's awesome. Like me. Like I met um. I, she's um like Scottish and Irish. Oh, okay. So she burns easy, right? Oh, so, yeah. So, um, like I said, my pale princess. <laughs> so she's introduced me to her family, and she's like, "Yeah, you know, it's my my boyfriend Eric." Uh huh. I was like, "Eric is an Irish Norwegian name. Let him know what they're meeting." You know what I mean? Like, uh, I've I've a uh, there's a comedian. His name is he's new to the scene, Jeff Garrett, and his name yeah. is Jeff, but he's black. So <laughs> he tells his girlfriend, he goes, "Hey." Let your family know what kind of situation they're walking into. That they're not just meeting. Like, make sure that they, you let them know that Jeff is black. You know what I mean? When yeah. you walk in. Yeah. And because um, he goes, I've been in those situations. They're like, oh, we're waiting for Jeff. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, but yeah, so same thing with me. Like, my mom picked my name because in the 80s, she had heard some news story how Hispanic sounding names were getting, like, less jobs. Or, like, oh, like less callbacks on jobs. Yeah. So she called me Eric. So it's like... <laughs> Eric, like I'm, my mom doesn't speak English, so she can't even say my name right. <laughs> she just say Eddie, Eddie. She actually says Eddie, which I said on the podcast too. On, I heard uh, this. Us and, and and we'll we'll get into that. But like my family even thinks it's Eddie, but it's Eric. But oh in Spanish, my. it's like Eddie. So they'll be like Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of that. But yeah, my mom thought that, so she called my next sister Vanessa. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. My okay. brother's name is Vincent. Or Vicente, but he goes by Vincent. Okay, okay. Um, other sister's Marjorie. You know, and then my baby Marjorie. Sister, Marjorie, right? Does that sound like a white woman? That sounds like a white woman in the right? 50s. Definitely That's... not a white woman. She's the one that had a baby with a Puerto Rican guy and also a Brazilian guy. Oh, she damn. She, too, loves ethnicity. Damn. And obviously having kids. But then my baby <laughs> sister, Talia. Hmm. She went full Just like Latin that. on it. Said Talia. Well, Talia could also be other from other places too. But uh, yeah. um but yeah, no, I mean it's uh it's a name where I'm like Eric Bernal. If you say it like that, you kind of don't know what to expect. Mm-hmm, Who's Eric mm-hmm, Bernal? Mm-hmm. It could sound either or. But it, you say Eric Bernal, it's like, uh, oh okay. okay, I see who you bring. Eric Bernal is like Bernal is like so the syllables are perfect, the timing is perfect, it's the right ratio of consonants to vowels. Do you know I used to not think that all the time? Really? So I think that was. I used to think like, man, I wish my first name was. Um, I want to be named Jason. Okay. Was the Red Power Ranger. Oh fuck yeah. Or Tommy. Yeah. I used to be like Tommy Bernal. Oh man, I liked Billy. Jason Bernal, which is the same syllables. It should have been Eric Bernal, like which is the same thing. Yeah. But like, I don't know why. Like those were my. I wanted my first name to be Dubois. So 
for whatever reason. Dubois. Dubois. Shit, Dubois. man. That's super it's French. Right? Ooh la la. Dubois. Dubois. Bernal. That's pretty sick. Like, I thought heavy about this at nine years. I was like, Mom, so I'm ready to change it. And he's just like, no, you can't change it. <laughs> you you couldn't change it rebrand anyway. like Gaga? No, I, want, I wanted to. I don't know why. I never liked my name until I got older. And I think in college, yeah. girls would never call me Eric. They would always say Eric Bernal. They're like, what's oh, up, Eric Bernal? Shit. Hey, it's Eric Bernal. <laughs> and they're the ones that kind of made me feel better about it. And now when I'm brought up on stage, nice. it's Eric Bernal. Nice. So I, if you say okay. this is Eric, and even like when I was in, ne- in the networking scene over here in comedy, yeah, I remember introducing myself as Eric, and I remember this guy said, Eric Bernal. You got to introduce yourself. Oh, like, it's, it sounds good. Yeah. I was like, does it? He's like, yeah. I was like, you're your own critic. You're your own like n- number one critic about yourself. So I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. Got through that, and now... Uh, Do you have a middle name, by the way? Yeah. What's your middle name? Bolivar. Whoa! All right. She slapped on the spice on the... Bolivar. Middle. So that's my dad's uh, father's name. Okay. It gets deep, actually. That's okay. my dad's fake first name. Fake? For, okay. Let's get the shovel and dig. Let's go deep. My great-grandfather. Okay. German, German army. No way. Yeah. Oh. German army. Oh, shit. So... Yeah, they fled, just like a lot of people yeah, did. Yeah. They went to Argentina, whatever. Yeah. Uh, story goes, my great-grandfather didn't like Argentina, or just didn't okay. like the area. Ended up in Ecuador. Had my Damn. grandfather, who was a kid, with him, changed his name. So in Ecuador, and Colombia, and Venezuela, like the yeah. big guy is Simon Bolivar. It was the reason why you say Simon. When you say somebody goes, hey, you want to go there? Yeah, Simon, Simon. It's like, it's played off that word. He's like the George uh, Washington okay. of like South America. He's like the liberator. Okay, okay. So my grandfather they changed him to Bolivar. Dang. When I went to Ecuador a few years back and I never met my grandfather, I had two sisters I never met that my dad had that I didn't know about. Wow, Jeff. My dad was just like, there'd probably be more, you know, my dad's a weird guy. Also did comedy. I was never raised with him, by the way. Okay. Did comedy, okay, played okay. guitar. Yeah. Sang, all like always the performer. Dang, okay, yeah, and, okay, and I, okay. I'll get back to that. But my, gra- I met my grandfather. Yeah, in Ecuador, yeah. he was a white man. Dang, with blue eyes, white dr- who's white blue eyes, and he was like, he was probably five ten at that point, maybe five nine. Okay, but you shrink as you get older. You know, you right. get smaller. Because I was like, and then my dad was like, no, your grandfather was like six three when we were young, and. Shit. uh my dad is the runt. He's like 5'8". Yeah. But the, his other brother's like six foot. They all have light eyes. They're Dang. all light skin. My dad is like very fair skin. Yeah. And uh, the name Bernal. So then I went to like, I got to really look at this. Went to Ellis Island. So from New York. Went out there. Yeah. Bernal's, the name Bernal stands from the last name Barnwell, which is from Ireland. And oh. they would write your last name the way it sounded. So Barnwell eventually became Bernal. Huh. The Bernals went to Austria, Germany, and Spain. So the yeah. Spanish conquistadors that came to Mexico, because there's Mexicans last name Bernal. And I was Ooh. that always kind of messed with me. I'm like, am I yeah. Mexican? You know? And they're like, no, that's from the Spanish conquistadors. You come from Austria, Germany, oh, that area. Shit. So my dad's, what is he? If my so he's half German, half Ecuadorian. And then because okay. his when his dad was there, his dad was only Ecuadorian women. Right, right. And I spoke to my grandfather. He said, Yeah, this is uh He's like, I remember I still know a little German. I remember being a little boy. Like, Damn, all this dude. stuff, man. And I and I used to tell my dad, I'm gonna talk to him about it. My dad's like, don't talk about it. It's like dark history. Like, yeah. You know, I, and then I was like, nah, I want to know one day he's gonna die and I'll never know what's up. And he goes, Look, man, he's like, I don't know what to tell you. He's like, it was either that or we kill your family, sort of thing. At least that's how our, our father really told us. Yeah. He, he told us the truth, the things that he's done. And Dang. it's a wild thing, right? Dang. So that's what I'm saying. And then my dad played guitar. <laughs> <laughs> and then did comedy. Never was raised with the guy. And then he came back to my life when we were about 17, 18 and been friends ever since. Wow. But that's what a story. When you want to go. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I feel like there. not a lot of people actually know that story. So that is that is pretty right here cool. comedy advice. Right podcast. here, exclusives. Man, I was just thinking too, what if your name was Eric Burnwall? What Burnwell. if it yeah, what if it had ended up being Or Barnwell. 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 Yeah. And I started realizing because I then I studied surnames in college. Okay. And I then that's I kind of really dive deep and they were like, I really want to do it on my name. So then I did. And then like that's it was a good paper because of 
my lineage and everything. Right. And I was able to kind of trace it. Right, right. And they're like, man, that's an amazing story. Because that's what happened. They, but they would do it on Ellis Island. They would just change your name. Right. Two. I've heard that. You heard yeah. that like famous story, like these two Italian people came and their name was two weird. Yeah, so yeah. they were called the Male and Famale. Yeah, like yeah, male yeah. Male and female. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Male and Famale. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, so it happened constantly. But uh that's crazy. I don't know how my name, my family, because my family came in through Ellis Island, and they didn't, because my last name's Satani, and it's spelled, people spell it wrong all the time. Two Is T's, two N's. Yeah. 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 And so, and I, we still have relatives over there. Like, I speak Italian. I, oh. uh, shout out to all my listeners that complain that I say that I speak Italian every episode. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But, um. We know yeah. you're listening. Yeah, we yeah. Know you're yeah. watching, too. You're there. You're there. Thank you, Tim. But, <laughs> um. Yeah, it's it's uh, what was I gonna say about it? No, it's just like everybody gets it wrong. I'm surprised that they didn't change it. They were just like, all right, Satani, you're gonna be uh, spaghetti now, and just yeah, th- change it. It is interesting because you, I, as you live here, you only know what you know, right? So like, right. what I've realized, I traveled, I I visited, uh, I got fired from my job like seven years ago, I had money to go buy like a nice car, okay, or a okay. house. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to spend it on a trip. And I nice. backpacked Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru. Nice. That's when I met my grandfather. That's when I met wow. the two sisters that I, I never knew. Yeah. And what was surprising is how much Asian influence there is there and how many huh. Asians live there. Huh. I think people fail to forget that there is a billion of them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, and over a billion. You yeah. know what I mean? If, if, yeah. we're, if statistically, one out of what, every seven out of eight people are Asian. Yes, that's so, true. I think there are more Asian people than there are. Others. There was an Asian president of Peru. Dang. Yeah, okay. there was guys I would meet in Ecuador named like Jose Chung. Interesting. You know, in Brazil too, there are tons of Asians, and there's this huge. I can't remember the exact specifics, but it was like back when there was this huge influx of immigrants from Japan. Yeah. To and the U.S. was like, nope, we're not going to take any more. Yeah. And then they signed this accord with Brazil where they could come to Brazil and then Brazilians could go there. And they still have this accord where you can't get citizenship, but you can go and live in Japan if you're a Brazilian and vice versa. So basically, you can't like affect their politics and their laws, but you you right. can live here and benefit off. Right. Any other way. Okay, you can come to my sense. house. You can't wear my Uggs, but you can yeah, come to my yeah, house and do chill. whatever you want. Yeah. That is interesting because South America in itself is interesting. Like, yeah. I, I was watching this whole thing on Brazil, the yeah. Amazon, and yeah. how much of it is just undiscovered. And it's Sus. like they were talking about how it's like it's the equivalent of looking at India and going, uh, we don't need to look over there. Like, that's how big it is. The size of Brazil the, that's uh, excavated and they, people think, oh, nothing can live there, but now they have like these little, Dang, like yeah. these lasers that go in there. They can find like like these streets or like these roads, and so it's wild. It's that, wild, like that big of an area is still undiscovered. That's crazy. I I do remember these these what are they? These scientists. They were trying to talk with some of the locals too, because there are some people that live in the Amazon. Yeah, and they have all these medicines and all these yeah. different plants that do different and things. And all girls are topless, so that's a plus. Oh. Fuck. Can't forget about that. Nice. All oh, Amazon titties. Yeah. All natural. AT. Yeah. That's AT, right. Amazon titties. Oh. I, I thought you said 18. I was I like, I hope. literally would watch those nature shows yeah. when I was a kid just to watch boobs. I never, you know, it, porn wasn't accessible like that back in the day. Right. So you had a dishwashers and porn. Those were the things I, watched, that I couldn't get either. I would watch uh, Pretty Woman or I would watch. Um, I watched Good that fellas or something. I watched Pretty Woman for the first time last week. Yo, I'd never seen it before. Great movie. It was it was phenomenal. Richard Gere. Yes, um, Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts. Her name was what? Vivian. Yes, yes. Dude. Yo, it's a great movie. Fantastic movie. Who oh knew that God. you can like make a <laughs> prostitute like so likable? I think that was like the best part about it. Like whoever wrote that wrote her so well. Yeah. That like and also casted her so well. You couldn't think of anyone else yeah. being that person. But yeah, I mean, shout out to prostitutes too. Yeah. Shout out. Shout out to all the prostitute listeners. It's a big portion of our Yeah, audience. yeah. We yeah. Have, some people call them just girls in Scottsdale. We call them That's right. Listeners. That's right. Prostitutes. If you don't know, you know now. <laughs> it's been wild out there see, these days. Oh man, it's been crazy. But I think it's been really successful for you because when we last talked, yeah. you were skyrocketing in the local scene. And now yeah, yeah. You've got a huge show coming up May 15th. 
Yeah, May 15th uh, at the Hill of River Casino Wild Horse Pass. Be shooting my special. Oh, my it God. It is something that I've been working on for a while. Yeah. But, like, it was, like, always, oh, that sounds like a good idea. Sure, we'll put it on the right. back burner. Oh, maybe we can get a meeting. Oh, like, it was constant. Hey, it was me just knocking on the door all the time. Yeah. And it was most of the time, like, other clubs were, like, get more experience, which is fine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, like, even, like, a lot of people were like, damn, bro, like, how does that even happen? I'm like, yo, you know, closed mouths don't get fed. Right. And you got to go out there and really ask. Like, I do these shows, like, in Scottsdale now, where I take over at, at a nightclub and I make it into a, a comedy club. That didn't happen overnight. That happened with me, like, bugging the manager, bugging the waiter, I'm a, or the bottle girl, the bar. Hey, and while I'm drunk, tell him, hey, I think it would be a really good idea. Hey, it was months of that. Yeah. For them to be like, all right, let's see if you could sell it out. Boom. Sold That's out. bad. And then ass. sold out both, event, both events. How did you co- how did that idea come to you? Were you just there at the bar drunk and you were like, you I know was what? watching I don't know if it was Goodfellas, but I was watching like some old gangster movie. Okay. And entertainment back then was you sat down and ate and you didn't get up. There was a band, yeah. there was a comedian, uh like Lenny Bruce or something like that. Right. This is the way these people started. You kind of were just enjoying your night, drinking and chilling and yeah. You would leave that area to then go to a dance if you felt like it, but most gangsters just chilled and just relaxed and drank their drink. And it was it was like high end experience, you know? Right, right. That's how I pitched it. I said, uh, hey man, if your people can't get up and and dance, let's force them to sit down and chill since they have to, but at least enjoy sitting down and chill and, and chilling, you know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's how I became that. And like That's great, man. And here's the thing, my my whole thing is like you know, somebody was like, "Yo, you're becoming one of the best," and that's not even that. Like, I, I don't, I don't care to be the best. I care to be the hardest worker, though. Like, that's it. And also, like I told like my other comedy friends and my comics, I'm like, "Look, if we can't all win, then I don't want it." Mm. So that to me is more important than anything. I'm never on some selfish shit. It's always right. like, after this is done, dude, I want to help other comics get it done. Nice. Like I'm hosting a show on. April 14th at El Jefe in Scottsdale, Old Town. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm just hosting. Nice. Take myself. I, yeah, I put my name up there so people can come or whatever, and they're, yeah. they're familiar to my face or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I want to I want to showcase the people that are on that show. You know, Savannah Hernandez, uh, T-Dot, you nice. know, Reese Muniz, and then uh, my boy uh, Prince Ali from L.A. is going to be coming out here. These are That's what I want to do. Because I feel like as I've done that, as I've always given back, like, you don't have to worry about paying me back. The universe does it. It may sound corny to some people, but I really believe like you just have your best interest and also look out for your brother, look out for your sister, and you'll be fine. Right. And there are some people who may be upset at it, and guess what? That's fine too. You're not gonna be able to control all that stuff or whatever. I remember I was watching some podcast and it was like uh, they were asking how do you deal with uh, bad comments or people talking mess about you. And the yeah. comic said, I just have to say, he goes, I just have to say that when I listen to bad comments, I just go, hey, that person must really love me. And I, and I was like, man, what a <laughs> great way to, what a great way to think about it. Like you took your yeah. time to either screenshot or, you know, to, to say something, come up with something. And right. that probably just fell on deaf ears or whatever. But there are people that, that do that. Yeah. But yeah, that's my, that's my goal. That's great. My goal is to make this place more popping than just, you know, a place to go drinking and chilling, which is also nice. And I respect everybody in that industry. But why wasn't everyone coming over here when L.A. and New York shut down? You know what I mean? In the name of Michael Jordan, I took that personal. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I took that personal. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I remember I headlined in El Jefe. We sold it out. And I remember at the end... I told everybody, man, this is for us. That's why I called my my special, Scottsdale's very own. Although I'm from Sleepy Hollow, the merch is SVO. Yeah. So I'm going to have merch Sleepy's, Sleepy Hollow's very own. Oh, nice. And Scottsdale's very own. Because they them two play a major part in my life. In a couple of days, I'll be in Arizona for 10 years. That's why it's very big for me. Dang. But the support of the city, without it, I wouldn't be anything. Yeah. So I always, I literally, I mean, I went through no BS after I posted the thing with you know, my, my, it was on the billboard. Uh, oh, by, yeah. By the, that by was the, so cool. By the casino. I took, I, I shit you not, maybe three to 400 people 
DM me, I made sure I messaged everyone back. That's awesome. Dude. Even if I was tired, I was exhausted at the end of the night. I took a nap. I came back up and I still did. I did my podcast and, and everything. And I still did it because to me, it's important. You know, I, I forgot which band it was, but I remember one band. Uh, it was one of their last uh, performances. I'd say they sold out like 10,000, 15,000 people. And they said, we'll sign everyone's autograph. Whoever's willing to stay, however long it takes, it may take hours. But if you're willing to stay, we're willing to stay Damn. as a thank you. I think those things, you, you can't lose sight of it. And you can't be this egotistical person because that just doesn't translate well. When yeah. you try to be like, oh, showboaty or whatever, it, you could do it if it's funny or yeah. it's cool or, you know, whatever that may be. Like if you're maybe purchasing a new car, maybe you're, you're proud of this right. type, some type of like monetary accomplishment. Right. Which isn't wrong. I think people also think like these things are wrong. I'll, I'll watch people because I'm a fan of comedy. I watch people kill it on stage. Yeah. And I can't wait to be the one of the first people to tell them how great they are. And then I'm like, hey, dude, would you want to do like a show? But no, nah, I just do this. To, you know, I'm going to go home now. You know? Yeah. I, th I think you hit a lot on it where it's like there so many people can have talent, but the people that put in the hard work, those are the people that I respect the most. Hard work beats talent. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. All That's day. Why I, how many? And you know what's so funny is that. I used to be one of these people. I'm not like that anymore. But like, I have comic friends that go like, man, that person's not even that funny. Like somebody who's famous. Yeah. And I'm like, they work harder than us. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. how could you even be upset at their grind? That's like when an artist, like a, mu a musician, makes it and you're like, how? I mean, like, I, I, to me, it's just wasted time hating on someone. Exactly. I literally yeah. think there's so many monsters in this in in this city, Phoenix area, greater Phoenix area, that could go up with the best of them all over the country. I truly believe that. Yeah. And I just want to be, if anything, a pillar to like help these guys go, hey, he did this shit in X amount of time. Why couldn't I do it? And I would love to be like, hey, let's work. Let's do this together. I don't care. What if it's somebody else I needed to blow up? And then he gets it and then hands it off to me and goes, Eric, I'm going to help you get up here. I'm like, cool, because that's the only way it's going to work. Yeah. You try to face everything by yourself, it's not going to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So, like, that's why doing these podcasts, I, I want to do, I want to help everyone. Let's say yeah. you gain one more listener. I gain yeah. one more fan, buys one more ticket. To me, that's a win. Yeah. People don't see it like that. Yeah. They're like, oh, but I'm an introvert. To me, you're just saying that you're not willing to work hard enough. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. And to the, and to the another point too that you were making, like you want to help people. That's what I want to do too. And I think it's so cool like we're helping each other right now mm -hmm. and and like sometimes I I see the talent that's here in Phoenix and Huge. I think it's incredible. And so Huge. I try when I see somebody that's really talented too, I'll try and get them on the podcast and be like whatever audience I have, I'd love to share it with you because Oh my god, it's everything. I feel like if we get more people out to shows and and people being able to recognize the talent that's out here in this community and in, in this in this uh, city, like I feel like we can be uh, like up there with L.A., Absolutely. New York, et cetera. We're the fifth largest city in the country. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. we're bigger than Miami. Yeah, we're bigger than Philadelphia. It's crazy. we're bigger than Vegas. And I think it's just we don't believe it. We always feel like we have to go somewhere else. I see a lot of people yeah. like going to other places. And that's great, and I hope that that really works out for them. But I wanted to get to a point where we blow this thing up with just locals, where big time people are like, "Dude, we missed out on this opportunity to make this our hub." Yeah, you know what I mean? Because I yeah. know there's other comics like I, remember, I don't know what this comic's name is in Texas, but he's big out there. And he doesn't really travel much. He has his podcast, the shows out there. It kind of just makes Texas his his yeah. hub. Yeah. And when comics come by, man, that's the that's the place to go to hang out with him. Yeah. Because he'll get people to your show. So I I I want that. I want I want that um that family oriented podcast love. Cause I would love to have you as a as yeah. a guest on our show, me and oh. Noe. And we'll talk about the the Noe Knows Nothing show yes. uh podcast because it's really blowing up, it's really doing well. And I want it to be everyone's podcast. So we do exactly what LA did. There's no difference in what they did. Like all they do is just do everyone's podcast to a point yes. where everyone just blew up, and now you're watching all their shows. And yep. You're watching when they go on this episode, and they're you're just watching the, almost the same episode, but them as a guest and them as a host. 
Exactly, dude. Like New York, the same thing. Yeah. Yanni's Papa's. They Chris, just got to. All right, it sucks because they, they just broke up that. I know, the History Hyenas. Yeah. Bummer. Yeah, Bummer. and it sucks because they were honestly one of my favorite comics. I got to do a guest spot for Chris and Stefano. I saw that. That's a, Yeah, the did guest that guest spot. spot it, it was awesome, man. I, I, I literally, I was trying to look at him in the crowd while I was like performing. Yeah. And I was like, and I mean, it was, everything was killing. His crowd was amazing. Yeah. It was packed house. It was sold out. That's I couldn't awesome. even bring my friends inside with me. You know what I mean? They told me last minute, hey, Eric, would you like to do a guest spot in 30 minutes? I'm like, I'm 22 minutes away. They're like, well, you need to come right now because the host is about to go up and the feature's going to go up and he's going to give you six minutes. I was like, okay. I went up there and he's like, he said he'll give you eight. Nice. Went up there and then I was like, damn, where was he? I was trying to, I'm, I mean, and it was just one of those nights. Yeah. Everything yeah. was crushing. I'm talking about boom, boom. Nice. Everyone's just like, and I'm like, where is Chris and Stefano at? Like, I wanted that. <laughs> and then I, you know, I say whatever. I go by the name of Eric Bernal. You have a good night, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Enjoy your headliner. Walk to the side and he's right there. And he's like, hey, killer set, man. That's I was awesome. Like, Thank you, man. He's like, yeah, you killed that. I was like, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Then we took a little pic afterwards nice. after the show was done. And I was like, man, because that's another guy. I listened to all his podcasts. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Those guys were one of the first New Yorkers that were able to like get the West Coast. West Coast really, really took it and, and ran. Yeah. They, Those they podcasts so are, are going to be the most popping. Exactly. My, like, well, I mean, depending on what you call Tim Dillon, he's a East Coaster, but it's 100K a month. It's Patreon mates. Yeah, dude. I, exactly. I, and then even, I feel like Bill Burr started to do it more, running the rounds with different podcasts, and then he has it with Paul and he, Verzi. And he, put, and he puts everyone on. And Bill Burr. Paul Verzi. Yeah, yeah. Those, so. those guys are dope. And I think as, as we get bigger and better, because that's all we can do. Yeah. I mean, and also... I want to do these with podcasts of people who have that ambition, that have that vision. Yeah. If we're just doing it for fun, cool. But then I I need to know that. Because I remember I know this podcast. I was a guest maybe three times. And I remember right. I looked at their, like, just their their energy of trying to get more listeners. And they were just like, no, we're just doing it for fun. We don't care if we have any listeners. It's like therapeutic to us. I'm like, well, what's the point of spending the money on the equipment and editing and hours and time and all this stuff and you're really just gonna do that like damn like you can lead a horse to water right but yeah. you can't make him drink and that's the thing like with every body i come in contact with whether it be a comic or a singer or an actor right if they're about it man i would love to support in any way possible i'll yeah. buy anyone's merch that's you know awesome. what i mean and yeah. i think that's why like when i started selling my merch i was so surprised with how many people were trying to buy it i was just like holy crap i was like damn and these are people that i guess that when they knew when they opened a restaurant or they needed somebody mm. that I was willing to bring me and my friends to everything. But that's the thing. You can't just ask people to go to your shows. You got to be able to support them and their business and whatever they do. That, to me, right. was the difference maker. Networking. Asking. I would meet someone and be like, hey, can I follow you on Instagram? And they go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Literally how it happened. I had right. 3,000 less followers like 10 months ago. <laughs> Mind you, I'm at 3,000, like 300. That's, yeah. all that's all I'm at. But still, like, that's like huge, man. No, I mean, I've, that's big. I've gone up that way just being that person. And not Always. only are, like 3,000 is big already, yeah. but it's also huge quality. Because every time oh, I see you post something, it's like it gets super the ratio of likes and comments. Yeah, it's super interactive. Dude, that re the, the thing of me posting, it's officially been 24 hours. And I kind of wanted to see how many views it had. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 17.2 thousand. And I have 3,000 followers. You know what I mean? Like, Dang. and that's, I, that's been reposted more times than I've, I've ever seen anything else. But that's why crazy. it has, because people love to root for people who are good people. Yes. That's why yes. for me, it's always been important to be a good person yeah. to everyone. Yeah. Even, I mean, even when I'm a jerk to someone, I will find the time to say I'm sorry about it. Very important to me these days yeah. because I don't want anything like that. I remember. Someone I may have thought that, I, oh, I, I was someone like was trying to shake my hand and yeah. this person just said hello to me that I knew. I was like, oh, what's up? And I kind of did this uh -huh. and I just didn't even look at him as I was shaking his hand. Uh -huh. And he was just like, what was that all about? And it messed me up to the point that I had to see when he was at an open mic. I went up to him. I didn't even go for the open mic. Hey, man, remember last time? Like, I didn't shake your hand. I didn't look at you, man. My bad. It was running into the a friend at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, for real? I'm like, yeah, man, my bad. He's like. Yeah, thanks. Like people remember those things, and for sure. And as long as you keep yourself accountable of just being that person, and also knowing that, you know, don't be 
so sensitive to things, you'll be fine. Chris Stefano says what? He says, uh, if it's not going to matter in five months, I, I won't give it more than five minutes. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. that gets you truly upset. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, cool. But I always got to fix these things for me. Those things have always been important to me. But yeah. now even more so. Just for like the, the good juju. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Absolutely. I, I think that's extremely important and overlooked by a lot of people because I feel like there is so much in this world and I feel like people gravitate towards the bad, obviously, mm -hmm. with like the news and things that show that, oh my God, these many people got murdered, these many people are dying from coronavirus, whatever. It's We gravitate towards that. And so I feel like if there are people out there that can spread good in whatever ways where it's like correcting uh, what they perceive as a wrongdoing or if it's just being supportive of other people because they recognize their talent and their hard work and their oh. ambition. I feel like that helps. And this is such, I'm going to apply for Miss Universe later, but like makes this world a better place. Absolutely. Because it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, <for> Miss Universe. <laughs> it, but it's so nice to be able to get that and like interacting yeah. with each other. Like this made, my day a better day so of i course. feel like i'm gonna spread it to like my little cat laying there on the chair that yeah, she's not supposed that's why to why i have an sync shirt on there you go it's my podcast shirt i love to wear it at podcast just wear like sync. just have and i love the and i love the faces that i get when people see me wear it because you would think like the the raddest baddest dude in a motorcycle will come see me and probably say something smart to say yeah he'd be like cool shirt <laughs> that's pretty cool you want to know why it's because in all reality those people who have to be so tough are the probably the, one of the most sensitive people. They have to bury it within that persona. Yeah. Because deep down inside, like I remember uh, in high school, this girl was dating one of like the most thuggish dudes I knew. Yeah. And I was like, damn, how could you date him? He's like, he's a little punk. He and like that man has cried to me more times than you can ever think. He's like, he cried when we watched the movie. But it's like those people feel like they have to be like. I think with me, my yeah, my yeah. superpower is I don't care. Yeah. Like I will wear a hot pink shirt of Cher or Christina Aguilera. I don't give a shit. Britney Spears. Yeah. I don't care because I think it's funny. I'll wear it or I'll do whatever. Or some people are like, hey man, that's kind of that's why. Like you ever see people say pause or something like that? Yeah. Oh, pause. Like for what? <laughs> like did you think I thought you were gay for a second and then you had a pause me or whatever or it's like it's so dumb yeah it's like so okay silly. cool that's but so i mean my friends still say it and i'm just like okay oh thank you because i i was gonna introduce you to my gay ex-roommate martine because you because you said that but now that i'm glad you correct now, <laughs> now we're on the same page <laughs> so it's so. and it's it's uh yeah i mean i think that's i don't really get to i mean i have a pun who's your data uh, shirt I like that. that I, I sport. I have two of them because they were so good, so good at my old company. They gave away the shirt a vendor did, nice. and it's an A/B testing company. And I was like, you know what? This is my jam. This is what I like. So you got to be able to be you, man. I That's what I think is so <laughs> important. Somebody like, was telling me, was trying to give me advice on what to wear on the special. Yeah. Oh, and what are you gonna? By the way, I wanted to ask too, really quickly yeah. before you get to that, on your clip. The police pulled up. Yeah. What happened? I was trespassing. Oh! <laughs> I was trespassing. And you know what's so funny is I heard, he was saying something on the radio. Yeah. But I was oblivious to it. Oh, you're I right. I was in my right, moment. Right, right, right. When he came up to me, he's like, hey, man, you're trespassing. And I was literally smiling. I was like, I'm sorry, man. I might have picked you up right now. Oh, and my God. And I, I perform me here in uh, May. He goes, yeah, I don't give a shit. You need to fight. You need Whoa, to leave. Shit. Oh, shit. Yo, my God. this Native American police. It was funny because my guy who's my camera guy. He's Native American, too. I was like, dude, go talk to your people. And then I was like, I don't know what you got to do. You got to do a dance or some shit, but talk to your people. And then he was just laughing. We got in the car when we left. But he was like, dude, you you were. I, he's like, you wouldn't stop smiling at him. I was like, because how could you be mad at me? You'd probably just be like, all right, get away. Like, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. he was like, all right, leave. Okay. I was like, all right, bye. And I literally was just like laughed. I was smiling so hard. I was like, hey, man. Like, like yeah. this is not going to ruin my day. Like, what am I going to be stealing? Dirt here? Like, what is it? <laughs> Did you see the video? Like, what am I What am I stealing here? What am I? I'm not shooting a music video. Like, I'm fucking taking it into something that's like monumental in my life. It's right. like, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you dream of and it happens. And it's cool that it does. Oh, man. People have been sending me like pics of it, too. And they drop by it. That's yeah. how I heard about it. They're like, 
hey man, I just saw your uh, billboard, digital billboard. I'm like, what? Oh my god. Literally man. got up, got in my car, called my camera guy, said, hey man, we gotta go. They said it's over. He's like, what? It was like ten minutes away. Picked him up. We went. Just and he was like, yo, that's crazy. That's so tight, man. Yeah. That's I'm. Crazy. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm so sorry. You. So oh, about the for, clothes. Dr- yeah. Yeah. Somebody was like, hey, you need to wear these type of clothes. Like, wouldn't it be cool if you did this? I'm like, that's not me. And I feel yeah. like anyone yeah. who knows me will know that. And I also, even if you don't know me, I feel like it'll transpire. Mm-hmm. Like through, mm-hmm. like I'll feel uncomfortable. Right, 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 right. You ever People see like those that. like um, music artists that like in the beginning, like they couldn't never be themselves and it shows? Like I remember <laughs> a random person to bring up Pink. Remember the oh, artist Pink? Yeah. She came out and then I was like, okay, cool video. But as she was able to become herself, the music got better, like a whole lot better. She became now like this. Yeah, yeah. She became who she wanted to be. And yeah. she even said it like, like uh, the one song was like, L.A. told me you'll be a rock star. All you got to do is change everybody, everything that you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what I won't do. I won't compromise that shit for anyone. Like if somebody's like, hey, man, I want you to be on a sitcom, but you got to quit the, you know, the No He Knows Nothing podcast. I'm like, nah, I'm good. Dang. Yeah, you just can't talk I, about this. I'm like, nah. Yeah. It's the last thing I want to do. I mean, yeah. everyone has worked at some type of job. And the reality is you can't be who you are. No one is like, hi, how are you? No one is really like that other than you. Yeah. But like, yeah. <laughs> you know, no one is like that other than yeah. you. But but no one's like, oh, my goodness, that's amazing. Oh, my. God. And it's like, why are we so fake to each other? Yeah, yeah, it suppresses so much that you know. It's you start doing hard drugs. That's why. Yeah, I know. That's why I miss the New York, dude. I, I am. A, I feel like I'm a genuinely nice person, and I'm very caring. And I go to New York, and I remember everyone just being complete asshole to me. And I, I, I was. I come from a farm up in northern oh, Arizona, man. so I'd wave to people across the street, oh, smile man. at them. Oh, definitely like, don't. What the fuck are you looking at? And I just remember after the years, I got a little hardened, but I loved it because I feel like people on the East Coast, they told you how they felt right there. It was never a secret. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I love that, dude. My wife is the same way, even though she's <laughs> from Brazil, not the East Coast, but she's like, Similar, I like yeah. this. I don't like this. And, and I know where I'm at with her. I never am like, is, is there is anything she good? better than knowing what page you're on? Nothing. Do you know what I mean? It's I like love in that. relationship and friendship and business. Like, cut the bullshit. Yeah. What are we doing? Yes. What is the, what is it? Because sometimes like, oh, well, I, uh, I, I remember uh, I had to be pretty blunt uh, one time with someone, yeah. a comic, and I would always get them on a show with me. Yeah. I'd pay them every now and then, but they would bring no one. They would oh. get no one to come, right? Oh, dang. Which is yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. To me, it's like, yeah, it's fine. I'll work my part, whatever. And then it was just like, hey, I don't think I'm getting paid what I should be getting paid. And I was like, cool. How many people did you bring last show? <laughs> I want to say, you know, I posted on my TikTok. My TikTok got like 6,000 views. How many? I don't care. See, that's the thing. TikTok will make you believe like you're famous. You can put any things like, oh, my, sh- my shit got a million views. There's 8 billion people on it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it, it is a little um, <laughs> bit of a lie. The the, the celebrityness that you get, it's, it's super sure. inflated. For sure. So it's like, I'm like, okay, but how many people came? Because this kid over here who has like 300 followers, yeah, got 20 people to come. Dang, dude. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, then, no, yeah. And, and then I would be like, how could I give you anything if you're not giving me anything? Right. Like, where does it come from then? Right. Should I just do? Should I just book you on things and just pay you because you're so you're good or good something? Guy. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know yeah. What I mean? And and I had to do that. So like, in certain times it does come out. For the majority of the time, I'm always like, hey man, don't worry. Like, oh, you only brought two people. Hey man, it's cool, man. Here, enough to get you food. And if I have it, right. But what right. if you you break even? You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to explain. Like, hey man. We made no money today. Yeah. Just so you know. Or yeah. maybe I lost money. Yeah. But the days that we do make money, like the Riot House one, uh-huh. I gave away two hundred dollars. I gave a hundred dollars to Lola Loka. She nice. won. Nice. And this other kid gave him uh Jeff Garrett gave him a hundred dollars. 
see they were so good and then we gave away gift cards and stuff it was a nice event everyone felt good you know and yeah, i think the audience yeah. really liked it where they were like kind of part of it like who should have got it who should not get it yeah but i'm a firm believer yeah yo let's cut the shit i will literally say that to my girlfriend hey babe cut the shit what is it that you want yeah. well it's just that sometimes what yeah eh. The dishwasher. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's like, fuck. Call back. Uh, it's like fucking dishwasher, dude. You don't know how to... I was like, I don't know what that machine does. <laughs> like, what does it do? Clean puppies? Like, I don't know what it does. Like, yeah, she... she uh, fuck, but dude. It's brand new, too. It's the crazy part. She gets, she's like, it's a brand new dishwasher, Eric. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get that one. No clue. Oh, man. You know, build, washing dishes by hand is just built... It's like driving a car a stick shift. There's an art to it. You know, yeah. you feel... And it feels like accomplishment right boom and also it's like it's not like we're it's just me and her just chilling sometimes yeah two plates two cups what the hell do i need to why does that need to like get all like set like you gotta cram oh let's keep eating let's keep doing it, and then boom we'll have a full no it's just clean as we go Exactly. I'm a firm believer in that. Exa- no, I, I believe the same thing. I feel guilty running the dishwasher now. Because one, I feel like we went so long without it. It's like, oh, I can just do this easy thing now. And then it's just two of us. So it's like, okay, we put in two dishes and then we wait a week and have the, the bacteria <laughs> accumulate. Legit. No, like just fucking wash them by hand. That's Legit. What I, feel. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, that was like bonding time sometimes with me and my mom. Yeah. It's like, yeah, 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 you dry it, you know, whatever. Yeah. Why don't we have a dishwasher? That's for rich people. That's for lazy people, mom would say. It's for lazy people. We just did that just meant poor. We were just poor fucks. <laughs> oh, my good. God. It, oh, man. It is cool being poor, though. I think there is a power to it. I uh, I forgot what I was. I was reading an article, and in, and in the article, it goes, and this is why rich kids are weak, who, who never get to be told no mm. never thought about that never being ever and then when they're an adult and let's say it may happen between the ages of 16 and up and they get told no for the first time they'll freak out dude yeah yeah i think I about that it. all the time kids will freak out on like remember that video game guy in orlando yeah he lost a madden game came back and shot the place up oh my god dude i think about shit like that i'm like dude someone should have and you know what? He probably is really good at that game, but he probably, he, he probably people let him win all the time, too. Oh, yeah. Pro- probably. And he felt the comfort of being the best. Yeah. That's why losses are so important. I yeah. ate dick the other day at, uh, I forgot which venue. I went up there and, like, man, the jokes were not hidden. And I remember, yeah. like, yeah, I got some laughs. Yeah. Yeah. I had friends that were there. I was so upset. Because I take those things personal for a good <laughs> couple minutes. That's, that's I fair. I left before the show ended, got in my car, drove by, and I texted my hey, man, I just left. You know, I ate shit. You know, I ate dick. And they're like, no, it was good, man. And I was like, nah, that's my statement. Damn. That's the only time I'm really hard on myself. But yeah. then I review the tape. Oh, what did I do? I let one person really change my energy. He was just like. Oh, that sucks. That sucks, dude. Like he, I, I, it I, almost like he didn't want to be there. Yeah, like someone dragged him there, and it was him and a girl, and there's already not a lot of people there. And I was just like, "What's your problem, guy?" And he was just yeah. like, "Oh my god!" He was like that, and I was like, "Damn, he fucked up my whole shit." So then I had to realize, like, "Hey, I can't let people mess my shit up. I should have just kept at him until it made me feel better." Oh, damn! Should have just ate his shit up. But hey, you know what? That's why the losses are important, you know, and that's why Super kids great. need to learn. That's lo- why I won't shoot up a comedy club. <laughs> there you go. You Can know, you, I, the yeah, thing yeah. that I'm most afraid of is my kids thinking that I'm a dumbass. Because I feel like now they have access to Google oh, and everything. Yeah. And I remember my dad, I'd be like, uh, Dad, where do babies come from? And he'd be like, you know, Sword. son, when uh, mm-hmm. a man and a woman really love each other, the uh, dad will blow into the belly button of the mom. And then the belly will just grow. Wow. And I'm like, dude, if I try to say that to my kid today, they'd be like, are you right. stupid? You have a, a, a time frame where you can... I tell kids whatever and they'll believe you. Yeah. Like my sister was yeah. going through some hard times and she told my nephew was four that Santa got COVID and he died. So. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, man. So. um, <laughs> That's a great way to get your kid to stop believing Like, you know, what she was already pissed. Yeah. My understanding, yeah. she was pissed. He was like egging her on about some shit. Why don't we have this four years old, like mouthing off? There's a video of him and he's like, what the freaking, what did he say? He goes, 
are you freaking kidding me? This kid, he's like three years old, I think. Three. Are you freaking kidding me? Why are we up this late? Because they were cleaning the house. And I guess they had an urge to clean the house. But anyway, egg them all, egg them all. Oh, what a Santa, Santa. He's like, well, you know what? Let me tell you something. Santa died. Santa got COVID. You know, I did hear on the news that uh, the North Pole did take heavy hits. Heavy COVID hits. Too. Elves yeah. all over the place. But you know what? If you think about it, if Santa did get COVID, he'd be one of the ones to die from it, though. Because he's fat. Oh, that's true. He probably Obese. has diabetes with all the sweets, the milks, yeah, and cookies that he eats. Yeah, absolutely caught that COVID death. Oh, my God. So For my, sure. Yeah, my sister eliminated, like, joy for my nephew this Christmas. Next year, he's going to be like, no, baby. Like, he got the vaccine. Mrs. Claus took yeah. He <laughs> Mrs. Claus got him a uh, Purell and uh and the Johnson and Johnson fucking vaccine. Santa my came s- back from the dead. My that's sister, man, she doesn't know she's going to become part of my set tomorrow. <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, all right. Well, oh, dude, I'm so sorry. Do you still have time? It's I have time, man. So I got time. Well, we'll run through. We've got this next segment, which is going through some advice, some self help, helping people. This has been a great conversation though Thanks, so far. Man. So I'll it's pause likewise. and just say. This has been awesome. It's yeah, been man, it's been you. awesome. I love, I love talking to you. It's yeah, good. Likewise. All right, let's get into the advice. We're gonna get into some questions, but before we do that, we've got an inspirational quote. Let's do it. To help just jazz us up. You had a great inspirational quote last time, which I actually can't remember, but you can use it the same time. You can use the same one. All right, maybe but do you have it. any inspirational quotes that help get you through those dark days, or if you don't have a good set, or you I, want some extra motivation? I think it is David Goggins had said. Um, no one's coming here to save you. And I think that was like the number one thing that I take with a lot of the things I do, whether it be like trying to lose weight or yeah. coming up with better skits or being better in, my, in a relationship, being a better business partner. Right. It's like you can tell you, you people think in, in the book, he talks about that people like think that you, they're, that someone's just going to, let's say a comic yeah. who's really good. Thinks that someone's just going to go knock, knock, knock. Hollywood's here. We're ready for you. Like that's not, that's not gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. So no one's yeah. coming here to save you. Was one of the best lines I ever heard because I was like, man, only you can save yourself from you. Yeah, you can't you know? You can't do it. You can't teach someone how to be ambitious. Yeah. You can only tell them the, the benefits of it, and if they like it, then great. But that's my life, dude. I I I love that so much, and it makes me think about my journey even podcasting like no one's coming here to be like we want you chris stefano is not like we want you in our network exactly yet maybe but you know i'm no, i'm it'll happen. doing all the outreach i'm doing all the editing and the production and all the, and everything and it's sometimes so frustrating and mm-hmm. sometimes i just want to give up i'm sure with comedy sure. there are those moments like the bad yeah, set yeah, yeah those l's hit hard oh super hard but i've started to try and appreciate the journey more and just celebrate those little wins and and just celebrate the fact that like you know what i'm working towards this this is something that i want to be really big someday and it's these moments that i'm going to remember these are like my no dishwasher moments Mm -hmm. like my dishwasher will be hopefully a producer a videographer (laughs) and all that but right now i'm hand washing my episodes exactly and i'm There's, there's beauty in it man there is there really is it's like performing for three people dude i'm I'm in a fucking theater. Oh my god! Oh, Do you know my what I god, mean? It's amazing. It is like the true underdog story. Yeah. But to think people think like if anything was handed to me, absolutely not. No. You no. know what I mean? So it's like, yo, what did somebody text me today? I was like, man, sometimes I can't believe it. And then he wrote back, Eric, hard work works. Yeah. Yeah. Even though sometimes it doesn't seem like it, there are those moments when you're like, when it doesn't, when oh it doesn't god. feel like it's working is when you need to work harder yeah you can't you can't slow down yeah oh my even my other friend he's a freaking famous photographer he texted me this morning he goes whenever you read this i need you to understand that you cannot let your foot off the gas i love that man i was like yeah, I, man give me energy that's why you have to have those people around you too i love that i ju- just because i was trying to get some guests for the month i started reaching out monday and then i got some no's and i was just like oh god i let it sting for a little bit and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to work harder. Just keep reaching out to people and keep yeah, doing this. And it's do. like those little things. You just keep trying or you give up. But, you know, that's not the route that I want to take. Yeah. So Joan Rivers, real quick. Yeah. When they asked her, uh, I'm pretty sure it's Joan Rivers. They asked her, did any of the comedians that ever started with you make it? She goes, actually, all of them made it. All those who didn't quit. Yes. Yes. 
So that was huge. When I heard that, I was like, man. Wow. So everyone that quit, well, they didn't make it. She was like, but everyone who stuck with it, they're doing something. Whether yeah. it means some, some part of comedy or even whether they're writers and things like that, they all made it. Oh, that's great. It's wild. Eric, I, I had Eric Griffin from Workaholics on a couple episodes ago. Oh, that was dope, yeah. Oh, thank you for listening. And he said, you, you don't fail, you quit. Exactly. And I was like, oh, shit. That exactly. Hit me in the heart. All right, some beautiful quotes great that we just comment. sprayed on each other over here. So this is great. Now that I'm nice and wet with inspiration, yeah. we're going to have an inspirational quote from a robot called InspireBot that uses AI oh, right. to take some of the wisest <laughs> words yeah. known to man and woo man and make a quote out of it. Eric, let me know what you think about this one. Mm. InspireBot this week says, the more scandalous the magic, the greater the universe. More, more scandalous the magic, the greater the universe? That's right. Scandalous magic. Mm. Usually when I think about magic, I don't think of it as very scandalous. I usually, I'm not a magic fan. But You know what I think? Scandalous magic could be comedy. Oh! Do you know what I okay, mean? Okay, okay, okay. It is. I I watch a lot of things. I remember a lot of things. One thing that Charlie yeah. Murphy once said, this wasn't about his comedy. Because when he did Chappelle's show, it was like one of like the deleted scenes and where they were interviewing him. And yeah. He goes, um, he would fight people that wouldn't laugh at his brother's jokes. That he took it personal. I don't know why, like, it gets me choked up thinking about that because he took it personal. Mm -hmm. And he goes, um, he goes, you know, there was somebody that would heckle him. I'm like, come on, man. There's 500 people here laughing. You're the only idiot that's not laughing. So he would go and swing on him. He'd fuck him up. He should be part of uh, Eddie Murphy's security. Eddie Murphy had to fire him because he was too crazy, right? <laughs> oh, shit. But what he said was like, man, you don't know what it is to get up there. Yeah. He was like, if you guys have never done comedy, you know what it is to get up there and go, hey, this is funny, and all you're going to laugh at it. He goes, it's like it was magic. Yeah, and the good. shit that Eddie Murphy did was scandalous. It was wild stuff. It was that stuff that true. you couldn't believe that was being said, and I think that's what made it scandalous magic, which made the universe greater. That is amazing. And it makes me think, you know, because sometimes I remember in some countries, Italy at one point, Brazil, you had to, if you were a guy, go into the military for one year. Yeah. One year. And so people here, they'll say, you know, I think everybody should go into customer service for one Wait year. staff, something, yeah. Right, which I think a lot of value from that. Yeah. And now yeah. I just thought maybe for one year, everyone should try stand-up comedy just oh. to realize how much of a grind it is and it how is. much bullshit you get from hecklers and other folks. It is and the wildest thing to go up there and then say something that has killed everywhere and then it just bombs. Oh. And you don't understand why. Yeah. And they don't understand why either. Like, you may have said it differently. You don't even know. Mm -hmm. that's like, crazy. I can see comics on and go, sometimes, that's why I like to switch up a lot of my material. The reason why is because I see some one and it almost look theatrical. Almost like it's so polished, it's over polished. Oh, Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're like, like they're like waiting for the for you to laugh. This is when you laugh, guys. You know, and I'm yeah. just like, I like it almost looking like it's by accident sometimes. Yeah, I like that. that that's like yeah. my style. Yeah, where it's like, oh, like I already saw this person on the, on, 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 like, on, like while before I was walking, I already had made three jokes already, but it's gonna look like it's right there at the moment. Nice. That's nice. but yeah, there goes your scandalous magic. Oh, that was a good beautiful. one. Greater than I know, Inspirebot's killing it these days. Okay, now that we're nice and jazzed, we've got a question from Reddit's found by our fan Ian. Thank you, Ian. It says, When other men hit on my girlfriend, I just want to kill them. Mm -hmm. I have a very beautiful 29 year old girlfriend. I'm yeah. 20 and male who used to be a model, and literally every time we go out in public, at least a handful of dudes will hit on her right in front of me or give me a dirty look about how hot she is. It bothers me to the point of where I'm at a bar and with her, and some dude flirts with her, and I want to take a glass bottle, shatter it on the table, stab the guy over the head, and hit him over until his brain matter paints my shirt. She's mine. Why will nobody understand this? She says where jealousy is sexy, and she doesn't understand it's eating me alive to the point where I could kill a man. Please help. How old is he, 20? 20. 20 20-year-old male. He never got said no to. It's he's, security, he's man. It's, it's security, and it's... um. Yeah. Holy shit. Are you a jealous guy? Used to be. 
Okay. How um, did you overcome your jealousy? I read this really good. I was it was I was really bad. I used to maybe I used to have a really hot girlfriend. Okay. I still have a hot girlfriend, but I like I always attracted hot girls. Okay. Like this, that's not even like a freaking like two you know two to mile horn. I always had like really attractive women. Nice. And I always had, I would self sabotage, mm. which he will do. Now I remember my boy was going to get he's getting his PhD in psychology, and I really asked for his help. And and then I asked a guy who was not in PhD. They both gave me really good advice. So the guy who was not getting his PhD, uh, he actually does international tax. And he goes, why are you so worried about a guy that she's not with? Remember, the woman chooses the man. The man never chooses the woman. Mm. So I was like, okay. He goes, he would say, hey, man, you got the juice. You got the sauce. She, like, she likes your formula. No one else's. But don't make her feel like she shouldn't. shouldn't. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Boy with the PhD. He's like, let me uh, send you an article from Psychology Today on on um, on jealousy. Oh, okay. And this okay. shit is written by a woman. <laughs> and how she had to overcome her, her jealousy. She said, it's okay to have jealous thoughts. It's just not good to have jealous actions. Mm. You know what I mean? You can't let it show. She said that she would go out with her her. Her boyfriend, who was funny, and if another girl laughed, she would be like, "Did you fuck him? Like, did you did you hook up with him? Like, what is there something? If I go away to the bathroom, like, you guys are probably gonna hit it off, you know? That was her thing. Yeah. And a line out of that whole article, which hit, said, "But and more likely, more than likely, that person, it's not gonna cheat on you. More than likely, it's not gonna happen." But keep acting like that, and the and the thing you fear most, you will fulfill that premonition. Oh shit! Oh my god! Like a self fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, that is. You fulfill that premonition. Damn. You know what I mean? You think about it also. How many times somebody will people... fulfill her premonition? Yeah, exactly. How many times do people say, um, you know, like I might as well cheat? Yeah, yeah, that's true. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna live with the guilt of it. Dude, you got a hot girl? Who gives a shit? Right. Let me tell you something. Guys are guys, and they're always going to be whatever. It, you, the way you handle yourself, jealousy is sexy. I feel <coughs> concerned for that girl, too. But, like, that's what she says to him. Maybe to calm him down. But in all reality, man, that does nothing. Yeah. Guess <laughs> what? You'll never see those guys ever again. Exactly. Like, exactly. go ahead and, and execute that interaction that's going to be less than a minute. I used to have a girl like that too. People, are like, oh, she's so beautiful. I brought her to a museum in New York. Oh, it was like five times, and I was like, oh my gosh. And then I just real, and I just laughed at myself at a certain point. I go, couldn't it be worse than that? Yeah, true. They could be like, oh my god, how hideous. Dude, this girl. They could be like, dude, you're so much hotter than her. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, oh fuck, I'm not even gay, dude. I'm just letting you know, like, you could do better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but no, uh, advice to that dude, man. It's just not worth it. Right. Right, Inse exactly. Insecurity is gross. And talk to her. I, I think if she says jealousy is sexy, that might be a miscommunication issue yeah. of like, how jealous does she think is sexy? I doubt she thinks you picking fights and wanting to shatter bash beer bottles yeah. and bash someone's head yeah. in is sexy. That's, oh, maybe if she does, then you should probably leave her because I don't think it's worth yeah, it. Yeah, and there's, there's women that will pick a fight. I know them. Mm. Well, when I was younger, when they were like to see, oh, my man's gonna fuck you up, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it's like, oh, dude, people do wild shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. When it comes yeah. to passion, yeah, people, and then you introduce a little alcohol to it, and they'll they'll add a couple more things to it, right? They'll pick something up. They may change their whole life over some stupid shit that could have been left alone. Yeah. So, yeah, man, not worth it. Uh, use your energy on. Doggy style. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Just go have sex. Just have some good sex. Yeah. All right. Last question. This one is found by our fan Liz on Reddit. It said, I might have a debt collector on my ass. So I, 21-year-old female, wanted to cancel a psychiatry appointment, and I swear to God I did it within the time, but the psychiatrist begged to differ. I was getting mail for months that I needed to pay the late fee, and I ignored it. But then I got a letter in December saying the psychiatry office will now hire a third party to ruin my credit until I pay? I kind of ignored that, but now I'm scared. Do they have something over me? Is it possible that was a bluff? How do I know if it was a bluff or not? Don't pay it. Never pay it. Never pay it. 
Just to, you know, now your phone tells you when uh when a debt collectors are calling. Oh wait, really? It's like yeah, maybe spam. Like, it's like maybe debt collector services is calling you. I'm like, oh shit. Oh my god, I love how much of a wingman our phones have become. Oh, yeah, because now great. it's like, dude, don't pick up. This is spam. Or don't, dude. It's a debt collector. Don't answer. I had a joke about dude, that. Dude, it's your ex. <laughs> I had a joke about that. It was like, you know how you could be talking about a shirt and then your phone would be like, oh, do you want the shirt in this color or that color? Like, what the fuck? You know, you talk about a vacation, you're getting emails. Hey, do you want to go to the Bahamas? You know what I mean? And then I said, and I was like, it's funny because then I was like on my way to Old Town, right? And I told my, my girls, guys, yeah. right? And I didn't even say anything out loud. You know what I mean? I didn't say anything out loud. Yeah. And I was like, 50 percent off at the W. Like, how did my phone know I wanted to cheat? <laughs> like, how did my phone know I wanted to cheat? You know what I mean? So it is crazy that <laughs> these debt collectors, let me tell you something. They already sold that debt is what they did. Mm. I think that's what happened. I used to work in debt collection <laughs> 10 years ago. Oh, dang. What they do is they sell that debt. Now, if they get you recorded saying and they prove who you are, I used to just pick up and be like, you got the wrong person. Stop calling me. You're harassing me. I'd be like, okay. Oh, dang. That's amazing. Yeah, I'd be, like, be like, hello? Yeah, who is this? I'm like, I'm getting calls about this guy all the time, Eric Bernal. Who the hell are Can you tell me who you are? No, sir. Um, Are you sure you're not Eric Bernal? I'm positive. Like, what's up? I'm Eric Barnwall. Yeah, thank I'm you Eric very Barnwall. Much. You know what I mean? And they're like, okay, we'll take you off the list. I'm like, okay, thank you. That's amazing. I also love, I, she's asking if this is a bluff or not, as if it's a psychiatrist trick. It's like a psychology <laughs> no, no, thing. No, 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 like, no. I mean, every state has different laws, I would say, research them. Because, um, I mean, yeah. I, I remember I went like bad on a credit card in college. Mm-hmm. It's like five G's. And I remember I just, I came out here and I didn't pay it. And then I had to get my credit better. Otherwise, I would never own a home. Oh, but yeah, yeah. they uh, forgave the whole debt. I mean, enough time went by. But, uh, you know who didn't forget the debt? All wounds heal with time. Best That's Buy. All major bank. Well, Best Buy was backed up by Chase. But Best Buy was like, nah, dude, you better, you better pay this, pay back for that TV. Best Buy is a vengeful bitch. She, yes, I feel like Best Buy would yeah, do that. Like the Geek Squad, all of them. It's all a conspiracy that they're part of QAnon. Oh shit! I'm pretty sure. Oh my, I I could Maybe believe they it. Led in the riots. I could believe it. I thought I saw the Best Buy fabric in one of the Easily photos. Easily, those guys could help you put up a TV on your wall. Mm, those guys, for sure. That was wild, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but no, look, lady, if it's a lot of money, look. Unless you're looking to look, if it affects your credit, obviously hit them up. Let's go. Until then, let it ride. Yes, let it ride. Let, let it, it ride. ride. Yeah, get a new psychiatrist get too. A I new guess psychiatrist. She's like, she's like going through some like literal absolute problems, and she's like, Man, I need a psychiatrist, but I don't want to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> like, dang, bro. Oh man, I guess you could just do you get like a free with each psychiatrist? You get like a free consultation. Well, there's like online ones now. Oh yeah, you could yeah. Better help. That's right. That's right. Betterhelp.com slash a comedy advice podcast. Yes. Fifteen percent off. Please sponsor for the love of God. Uh, <laughs> all right. On that note, Eric, thank you so thank much. Thank you, man. It's been awesome. We've reached the end of the podcast. I wanted to ask you real quick. What have you got to plug? Where can people follow you? All that good stuff. Uh, Instagram, Eric Bernal comedy on Twitter. It's Eric B comedy. Uh, don't follow me on Facebook. That's weird. And um, <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm at a gay club in April. I forget which day. Oh. I think April 7th. Yeah. It's going to be nice and gay. Nice. And then I'll be hosting a benefits a uh, charity event on the 24th called Taste of Arizona. Oh, okay. Uh, really big one, so it's going to be pretty dope. That's awesome. And uh, May 15th, Ticketmaster. Just search Eric Bernal, Ticketmaster, and you will see uh, availability for my special. It's going to be real dope. We have special guests coming. It's going to be a whole thing. Red That's carpet event. awesome. Links are going to be in the show notes. You can click there. I cannot wait to see you. With your it's going to be dope. It's going to be awesome. All right, well, thank you so much, Eric. Thank you, guys, and we'll talk at you next week.